Sally Talk with Rick and Nettie. This is my beautiful wife, Nettie Rado. Yes, we want to welcome our viewers. And you know, it's an honor to have you with us. You could be a viewer or a listener, but it's an honor. And we're, I'm really excited about our guests. Rick's going to introduce them right now, but I have to tell you a little bit about them. These are very special people mm -hmm. to us. They inspire us yes. um, for the kingdom of God. They represent the kingdom of God very well. And not only that, they represent the inter entertainment industry mm -hmm. very well. Yeah. We love them. We honor them. We consider them as family. Mm -hmm. We actually invite them to our family parties and different things. But yeah. they're really precious to us. And I know they have some wisdom from God and insight from God um, for us. Mm -hmm. And Rick, go ahead and introduce them. Well, I'm excited about our special guests. We want to welcome them to Rally Talk. Make some noise for Derek and Sophia Luke, hey. welcome you guys. Hey. Welcome. Thank you for taking time. Thank yes. you for taking time. I know you guys have a well of life, a river of life flowing through you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, when we started this rally talk a few weeks ago, I said, Lord, you, whoever you want mm -hmm. to be a part of it, you just yes. put it on their hearts. And, mm -hmm. and I'm only calling those that I hear. If God doesn't. Tell me to call somebody, I won't. That's right. But you guys were right away. The Lord showed me to ask you guys, and thank you for taking time yes, to be you. a part of this. Now, for those of you, I mean, I think the whole world knows who Derek and Sophia Luke <laughs> are. But for those of you that don't, maybe there's some people out there that don't. You know, they have a great platform. They're both actors, and they work in the entertainment industry. Like my wife says, they're ministers of the gospel. For instance... Derek Luke, you know him from a lot of movies. Yes. Uh, I'll just read a couple, just, <laughs> just a couple of thoughts. Let's see here. 13 Reasons Why, The, the Americans, Empire, Baggage Claim, Sparkle, Antoine Fisher. And the list goes on yes. and on and on. Sophia now, I'm excited because <laughs> uh, I seen her first movie, Knockout. It was amazing. Down for Life. But you might recognize her. She played... Uh, in our movie, The Rally LA, yes. what was your name again in the Sally. movie? Sally. Oh, Sally. I forgot. <laughs> she was uh, Sharka's daughter, and, uh, Chrissy's mother. I tell you, she did an amazing job. So we just welcome you guys to the show today. And I'm excited to get into what God wants mm -hmm. to say today. Yes. So I'm going to just throw out three questions, then we're just going to jump in. I'm going to let you guys talk. I just want to set it up. I'm praying for the show today. God really put on my heart our individual platforms. Each one of us have a platform in life. Some have a platform as doctors, teachers, uh, paramedics, baseball players, football players. We all have a different platform. Preachers, actors, writers, directors. So we want to talk about platforms. Derek, I just want to throw a question out to you and allow you to uh, talk about it. Um, using our platform for his glory. I want to talk about that for a minute. You have a large footprint, a large platform, but let's talk about using your platform for his glory. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, there he is. I'm excited. Hi, man. Emmanuel, welcome to the show today. Yeah. Rally Talk. Hey, well, welcome then, to the show. So, Derek, let's just talk about using our platforms for his glory. Mm. <laughs> you know, if I can just start off with that. Thank you guys yeah. so much. You know mm -hmm. we're family and this is yes, how we right. roll. Mm -hmm. um, this is such a blessing. Thank you. Um, yes. You know, the platform is whatever God is showing us in faith to be birthed in the earth is the platform. Mm -hmm. And the first start was, um, you know, when God started talking to us about Antoine Fisher mm -hmm. and we knew that that, that was a platform he created mm -hmm. and that's how he got the glory because we walked into what we saw in our spirit mm -hmm. and in our heart. Mm -hmm. And that's how like, he got all the glory because it was him. It wasn't something that we were trying to get into, mm -hmm. you know, like we see a part and we're like, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. But wait, is, are we registering that in our spirit with God? Mm -hmm. Or is that something we, we want? Mm -hmm. So when God started showing us the Antoine Fisher, we placed, we lay hold of our faith with that. Mm -hmm. And 
he could not not get the glory because he had showed us that on the inside and we started mm -hmm. to walk that out on the outside mm -hmm. and that that manifestation of it was the full manifestation of his glory mm -hmm. yeah. and it was his idea that he planted into us and mm -hmm. we're yeah yeah so yeah. sophia are you saying sophia that Sometimes we could take a platform that we shouldn't take because it doesn't bring him glory. Are you saying that God showed you this platform and you looked at it, you examined it, and you seen we can use this for his glory? Is that what you're mm -hmm. saying? Yeah, it registered in our heart instantly. Mm -hmm. um, you know how the God will lead us, lead you to a show, a mm -hmm. TV show, and then he'll lead you to watch a specific director, and then he starts mm -hmm. speaking to you. Right. Like, you know, the spirit of God starts speaking to you. When we watch movies, and I'm sure like you guys, mm -hmm. you watch a movie and you start hearing the spirit of God and you start mm -hmm. seeing the principles yeah. in that. And so when we saw and we knew that in our heart, it was just something that it was the grace was available to walk it through mm -hmm. yes and you know what that scripture where it says run your race mm -hmm. yeah. um because i came from a athletic background mm -hmm. i love that picture you always sent to me too bro i'm like all oh. <laughs> um but because i came from an athletic background i had track mm -hmm. uh, i ran 800 and one of the things that our coaches tell us is to run your race mm -hmm. yes. don't run the race of somebody yeah. who's next to you because they may have a kick at the end that they've been training for, but it's not your kick at the end. And Derek, how do you separate self and him in the, in the industry that you're in? How do you, how does somebody like you, who's an established actor, uh, separate self and him? Because we see a lot of celebrity, if I can use that word, it's all self. Mm -hmm. but how do you do that? How do you do that as an actor? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> um, there's several things. Um, I think it's uh, um, come to my heart. I don't even know if it's a word, but like uh, being dependent. Um, you know, um, you know, when I first started, I remember going to an audition, and the the uh, casting uh, person they took favor, you know, on my life, and it wasn't that I. Uh, uh, went in and I was so prepared. I went in like many other auditions and I missed it. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a woman in there and she said, I want you to come back after lunch. And I was just like, um, okay. So when I, I basically, um, when I went back, came back after lunch, um, she basically showed me how to get to another level. And she said, I'm going to bring you before the producers. Mm -hmm. And when I bring you before the producers, um, it's, it's almost like a singer. You have to know what note to sing on. Mm -hmm. And I was going on audition after audition. But again, this woman, she favored me. It was almost like, almost like a Rahab, you know. Um, but if I can back you up, I was called to a audition of something that I really didn't want to go in for. But the spirit of the Lord led me to go in. And when he led me to go in, it was a genre. It was a, a character that I wasn't drawn to in my spirit. And when I went in, the the Lord began to minister to me and says, at this moment, it's not, a, it's not about you. It's about her. And I found out as we began to talk that uh, she was going through something with her son. And when she was going through something with her son, the Lord had me to minister to her. And so how do you get out of yourself is that when you go to a meeting, you're thinking of, you know, you're thinking like, choose me, choose me, almost like being in service and you want the prophet to pick you out. Yes. But there's, there's something about when you're not pulling from a man, you're pulling from him. And so the thing is, is that when you're pulling from him, even though it seems like this is your ticket, yeah. um, but you have to wait for the invitation, yes. you know? And so if you don't wait for the invitation, yes. then you miss the manifestation, you know what I mean? Oh. And so what, you know, what, what happened um, was that, um, so after I ministered to her, she called me back about weeks or months later. And when she did, 
um, it was the same woman who said, hey, um, I'm not going to let you leave. Um, you sold something into me. Now I'm going to sell something into you. And I'm not going to give you a role, but I'm going to give you a way on, on how that role needs to be paid, the energy of it. So she gave me insight. Um, and many times, uh, you know, we, we go in and we're, we're saying, man, this has to be. Well, only thing that has to be is that there's a grace on it. Only thing that has to be is that you're being led, you know, and, you know, like sometimes when I watch some of these shows and I totally understand, you're like, hey, you know, like this is my opportunity. But the opportunity is really allowing the, the mercy and the goodness of God to work on your behalf. Mm-hmm. And many times when that happens, you become dependent on his presence, dependent on his grace so you know like you were talking about platform platform is is platform is purpose mm-hmm. purpose is a platform yeah. so when i got there i realized um you know they I, I realized like even coming from the east coast they used to see people that come from the east or street smart or whatever and i realized that i couldn't navigate myself through right. the yeah. situation based on my head knowledge I needed a higher knowledge. I needed, I needed a epi- epinosis. I needed, I needed something greater. And so when that happened, then, you know, you, you, you get, you get results. And like my son says, when he went fishing, his uncle told him, he was like, I want to catch some fish. And his uncle said to him, he says, tell the fish, fish, get on my hook. Come on now. And so, um, a lot of times we're, we're, we're telling, you know, we're, we're speaking to things, but now, you know, the Lord was just, you know, he was just instructing me like, Derek, this is how, this is how you, you do it. This is, is, is not by effort. Yes. I have called you to this, yeah. but you, you, you have to depend on me in every moment okay. of the situation. Yeah. Hey, Derek. So that, Rick? go ahead. You know, one of the things too, is that God uh, had put in our hearts to be blessing minded. So when you go into an audition, you're going into bless. So even though I may not be saying much, I'm thinking about the blessing and mm-hmm. I'm thinking about the atmosphere that I'm entering. And even before we enter the atmosphere, like an audition room or a city or a state, we're praying over that place before we enter into that place. Mm-hmm. So we're speaking the blessing. We're charging the angels of God mm-hmm. to go forward. And then it's not about us. Like what? I want that part. I want, no, it's like, I want to release the blessing and the blessing will take care of what belongs to us. Because if we enter it into a competition, enter into an audition with a competition mindset, we're going to lose because we're not there to compete. We're there to release and we're there to release the anointing and we're there to release the love through the work, say, if I'm, I'm preparing for a character, um, I'm spending time praying about what, what that character has to offer in the scene. So when I have the content in my heart, then it's gonna come out of my mouth and my eyes and my body in an expression. And that's the blessing being released. Um, So being blessing mind just keeps us out of it being about us. And 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 you know, when someone says, you know, you're gonna take over something, well, well, think about it. The Think about it. You know, the Lord told him them that he was going to give them the land. Right. right? Mm-hmm. Well, most people, when they hear that, they just go into the land. Mm-hmm. But then there was a strategy. He yes. sent the spies. Yes. Mama! I, be- I believe that not only did Rahab house those guys, yeah. she also prepared those guys yeah. because she said, we, 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 we fear you, we fear you. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, many times, uh, you know, we're in the land, but we don't know how to, to possess it. We think possessing is power or, or networking. Yeah. Um, sometimes possessing is just putting you in a place where your grace has to work, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, put, it's putting you in a place where you may be around a lot of celebrities and the Lord may say, I don't want you to say anything because they can't do anything for you. Only I can do something. Oh, for you. I'm the only one that can highlight 
my favor will highlight you. And sometimes, and we have a friend that talks about in a different business that people come in the business and it's like, meaning they're sucking. They're yep. always pulling. They're never giving. Never and celebrities mentally are almost trained mm -hmm. instinctually to know when people are always pulling, they always want something. You know, they, they're, they're not trying to give something. They just want to take something. You know, I'm going to have to go back and listen to this over and over. You guys hit so many high points. And I know all you viewers are out there like uh, uh, licking your chops because so many things were said. So I just want to kind of just highlight a couple of things you said before we move on. You know, the other day I heard a preacher say this. He said, a lot of people come to God and say, God, bless my plans. Our, our, our words should be, God, what is your plan? Yeah. And this is what I'm hearing you guys saying. So the question was, how do you separate self and him? And you guys hit it on the nail. Because self, like you said, wants to highlight ourself. Mm -hmm. Self wants to talk. Self wants to promote. Mm -hmm. Self wants to give a, 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 a presentation all about self and mm -hmm. how good I am and mm -hmm. this is what I can do. And... Mm -hmm. But when we go into a place like you were saying, Sophia, you know, we go into an audition. And when it's about him, we listen on the inside. Derek, going back to what you said, it wasn't about you. It was about that woman. Mm -hmm. Imagine if self would have took over. That woman never would have got ministered to. Mm -hmm. You see the separation, the cutting of the, of the sword here. Mm -hmm. It's so powerful what you guys are saying. But then also you were being helped. You were being trained. You were getting wisdom from, by being obedient, you were getting yeah. helped. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That goes back to sowing and reaping. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. When you sow, yeah. when it's not about yourself, you always yeah. get a harvest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's, there's mm -hmm. definitely strategy, you know, um, inside of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. There's strategy. And that's what God wants to give. He wants to give us strategy in our all of our landscapes, yeah. you know, um, because I know, I believe that, that he has given us the land, you know, and someone says, well, you know, I, I've been out here. I've, you know, I've, I've done this. And that was one of the things that happened when I first came to industry is that I met unsaved and saved people mm -hmm. that have been in the so-called wilderness for 40 years. Okay. And I was just like, Laura, how do I not be one of them? Yeah. He was like, clear listen to my voice my voice only yeah that's and so that's what you know and, and it's and it's easy i mean in, in every industry there's a vacuum yeah you know and you, i mean what happens you you get next to steven spielberg or denzel yeah, yeah you're gonna you're gonna wanna Ooh. go hey <laughs> I, you know but then then the lord is saying i have something greater just wait it's timing you know that's the separating of self in him. Let me just say something really quick and I'm gonna throw something at you, Sophia. Now, I'm gonna just say it the way I'm hearing it in my spirit. Being a Latino, for those of you that don't know, I'm a Latino. <laughs> There's cultures that I needed to be delivered from. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, family ties and one of them was being bragged, braggadocious, I guess, announcing yourself. You walk into the room and you lay out all your gifts and your talents so everybody can see who you are. You, you tell everybody, you carry your resume with you. You know, uh -huh. when I first got into the ministry 35 years ago with my wife, I had the Lord say to me, Derek, Rick, it no longer can be you, it has to be me. You need to stop talking about yourself, announcing yourself, because if you do, the people will just get you and you can't help them. So I had to, man, I'm t I had to be ripped apart because of self in him. And this is what I'm hearing you guys saying. You guys are saying, you have to look on the inside. Is it going to help somebody? Are you going to end up sowing a seed into somebody? A lot of times, when it's just us, nobody gets help. Hoping we do think I, I help. I hope I help myself. Like you were saying, 
What can I tell Steven Spielberg? What can I tell him so he can cast me on the next movie? But God don't operate like that. Sophia? The first thing that comes to my heart is, you know, when God gives us something, like say a territory, like we know we're called to the industry. We know it without a shadow of doubt. And with that, when, you know, we can come against different mindsets of, um, you know, people who are coming into the, to the industry and they haven't been, or they've been trained in a way that, okay, you come in and you see what you can get and you start pulling from the land. You know, if you're a farmer and you just keep pulling, 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 you're not going to have any crop left. But it says to tend, it says to keep, right? To keep. And when we have dominion over something, it's not with a heavy hand or a gavel, it's with uh, love. Yeah. Like loving our uh, platform by praying for our platform. And what does that mean? Praying for your agents, praying for your manager, praying for your publicity firm, praying for those you will come into contact with at events and or auditioning rooms. That means you're keeping your territory. You're being faithful with that little thing. And oftentimes people are trying to penetrate a land that's dry because you haven't saturated it with the water of prayer. Exactly, tending it. Tending, tending it and keeping it. You know, it says in you keep your marriage, you keep it, you tend to it, you mm. you you massage your marriage, you keep it subtle and soft and attentive and ministry mindset in a minister in a marriage. You know, you serve one another. Here we are, twenty one years into being married, yeah. and it's so easy to just kind of go into neutral and you just, or cruise control and you just do marriage opposed to wait a second, you know, what does my husband need? Um, you know, Holy spirit, show me how to continue to, to serve in my house and in my home. And that ministry mindset, that serving mindset, um, really keeps you in a position of staying out of yourself. Yes. Now, I, I, just in my spirit, I want to be led mm-hmm. now. What you said, Sophia, here is when we keep our land, like when we pray for our land, we speak the word over our land, or when you do all that, you can show up in a room knowing what you said in advance is working for you. Now, I'm, I know I'm, I'm beating a, a horse here. We don't have to announce ourselves because what we did at home is working. Now, an indication of somebody who hasn't kept their land, praying, speaking, believing, they feel the urgency. Yeah. Where's my business card? Where's my real? Uh, what can I do in this room to get me to come up? That's an indication of somebody that has no faith that what they did at home is working for them. Or like you said earlier, Sophia, they don't, they don't have confidence that the blessing is working to, pro- to promote their land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. And, you know, I I love what you're sharing. One of my favorite things I love um, when we go to get invited to go speak to churches, because a lot of people, um, and helps ministry especially, because a lot of people will come to us and ask, how do I get in the industry? Do I get a headshot first? Do I get an agent first? Like, what's my number one? Mm -hmm. Well, the number one is to definitely be born again. Number two is to find your church home, not just any church. Because you can go to your church that your grandma went to, but that was for your grandma. But finding where you fit, finding that home base, and then getting rooted and planted in that church, and then serving. Because when you serve at your church, your ministry gifts are multiplied. Do you know when you use American Express? And they say, you get double points. You're racking up double points. And the most important thing that as... um, people called into the entertainment world and just whatever, if you're an architect or a restaurant person or just a businessman, you want to number one, have the ear to hear the spirit of God in what you're doing. And while you're in ministry, you begin to start sharpening your ear. It's like a Q-tip or like you put a pencil in a sharpener, you start hearing because when you walk in, God starts talking to you on the way there. The spirit of God starts showing you things that need to be done or showing you things to come. So when you get on set, you're going to be so used to that that you're just like, just. And you know, you guys are such an example, like Nettie was saying. And we're not just saying this, 
because yeah. we observed it in your lives of what you preach is truth. Because in 2010, when we met you guys, we met you in 2010, mm. I remember we said, wow, there's Derek Luke. You know, I, you know, I remember you from, from the Biker Boys and you know, all those movies you did. And I remember we, I didn't meet you, but I, I seen you at a convention and we went to go visit your church uh, mm -hmm. soul food. Uh, spirit food. Yeah. Food, that's good. And I remember when we walked in there, I'm saying, where's Derek Luke at? <laughs> well, when it was time to pick up the offering, I turned over and looked at the usher and I said, that's Derek Luke. He's the usher. <laughs> <laughs> Your platform mm. was for him. Mm. You had no pride. No self glory. It wasn't about you. You were doing what Sophie was saying. You were serving mm. in your land, and I remember that marked me. Wow, it marked me. Yeah. I said, "Here's a great, successful actor, but he's a man of God. For he's serving in the church. Mm. No self glory. Wow, His platform's not about him because most people, when it's about self, they want to be served. But because mm. you guys are about him, you're serving. My God." I'm mm. getting the preach out over here. Eh? <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> mm. Wow, well, that's mm. good. Exactly. exactly. Serving. Derek, I want to I want to share one more one more thought here. Now, um, at this moment, mm -hmm. I know this this rally talk is going to be shown and heard and seen from this day until Jesus comes. But at this moment, while it's coming out, you know. Our country in this world, we're kind of in uh, what they're calling quarantine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, we're in the film business as well. Mm -hmm. And right now at this moment, there's no filming going on. There's no, you know, uh, we're not getting calls. Everything's, they're asking us to put everything on hold. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I already know your answer because I know you guys are great people of faith. But I'm just going to throw it out because I know there's listeners. Mm -hmm. How are you staying so calm in a crisis, what they would say without Christ, a crisis? Mm -hmm. um, knowing that your platform right now is not producing or so many people, actors, they have committed suicide because they, they, literally, they literally stopped working, mm -hmm. all right? How do you keep your joy? Right now, that you're not out there filming blockbuster movie, how are you home with your wife mm -hmm. and your son, and still have the joy of the Lord and at peace? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm laying it out this way because you're not on the set right now filming, mm -hmm. you're not out there making a blockbuster movie. Everything's on hold. But why do you still have a smile? Why do you have a joy? Your platform's not producing. But tell the viewers why you guys are so. Um, um, this is that is such a rich question that is a loaded gun right there I'm so excited you said that number one the peace of God mm -hmm. like just the peace of God that passes all understanding we can't take any credit for it we're yes. just recipients of it yes that and we're tithers and we're operating in our tithing right Come on. That's right, right? That, that we're speaking that in our season mm -hmm. and then this is the big one brother and sister <laughs> last the last season and a half to two seasons we had been filming much okay. there were times when God was saying get up go and move to the East Coast and film and we were like within seven days time yes. yeah. we were on the East Coast packed up our whole family stayed there for three to four months and just filmed that's right so he was preparing us in that season for this so we're editing and preparing a package for something to be released in this season, which we'll hear about soon, that will benefit the education crisis. So this is huge, especially, you know, and for those viewers that, you're list that are listening who are called in the industry, right now, mm -hmm. use this as a season of preparation because this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. What is your next season? What is he saying to you now in the invisible, in your heart, in your spirit? What's the flickers that he's showing you? Mm -hmm. Is it work out, get your body ready? Is it eat right? Is it 
you know, what are you doing? We don't have to go with the wave of the world right now, which is the COVID-15 or COVID-19, where they say you're going to gain 15 pounds. Well, you're, no, 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 don't go with that wave. Go with the unction, prepare, use this. If you're a writer, you start taking master classes online. You go to Google, you go to find you a book that's that God, the spirit of God leads you to. And then you start stirring up that gift of writing. Or if you've got a script, now's the time to write it. Or if there was something in your marriage that you needed to really address, focus on that right now. Just start mm -hmm. feeding yourself, feeding your spirit. We can be entertained, but it's like junk food all the time. Yeah. But then we can watch a movie that we felt like, man, I just had some steak. Yeah. And, and feeding yourself in this season because this is a season of yes. preparation for the next. So mm -hmm. keep your mind focused on that, not on what's not there. Mm -hmm. And then you begin to act as though things are there. And when the things get there, you will be prepared. Mm -hmm. You will be ready. Mm -hmm. So that's what really comes so strong. And then the other thing is to praise. I mean, praise like, Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Praise. I'm talking. You don't have to have music on. Just start clapping your hands over your situation. If it's your bank account, you put that bank account in your mind, levitating in your hands right here. And then you start clapping over it. You start praising over it. You start using your weapon in your arsenal, your arson for yeah. this situation and praising for the next situation and praising over the hospitals mm -hmm. go there in the spirit there's no time or distance in the spirit even though people are saying we cannot be together we can't you know dine with one another in the spirit we are always dining with always. one another in the spirit we have access to touch our loved ones to touch those on the front line so we are here more armed than they are out there yes. yeah, big time. Exactly. Big so time. that just kind of that just came out of my spirit and you can also arm people who don't know how to praise yes you be standing in the praise gap for them yeah you know exactly. in, in, in psalms 23 it talks about you know we go through mm -hmm. the shadow of the valley of death we're, we're just we're not victims of it. We're not camping out, like some would say. In the midst of the valley, we're doing this. We're clapping. We're worshiping. We're praising. And I like what you said because for us, personally, we're so busy right now. And Psalms 105 says, we're coming out with gold and silver. We're seeing more fruit being done right now. Yes. that the whole world's in quarantine it seems like god has just added to us finances open opportunity this new rally talk show so many great things are happening yes. because it's about him and we're not quarantined with self i'm not quarantined with self mm -hmm. actually we're we're quarantined mm -hmm. with him simply mean we're in this sheltered place mm -hmm. in the sanctuary mm -hmm. uh, at his feet like mary and martha place. was in the same mm -hmm. place That's right. mm -hmm. i'm telling you guys yeah. you guys got me excited over here. <laughs> me too i'm all juiced up i want to go run around the block <laughs> hey derek so let's say some viewers right now who are not born again mm -hmm. who are in the industry Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And man, they're, 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 they got some burning ulcers in them because, uh, because of the times. And, and mm -hmm. they just need someone up here at third level to speak into the light. Would you do that right now? Because they're not working. They don't know, you know. They need to hear something from you. What yeah. would you say to them? Um, um, yeah, the, um, what's coming, you know, to my, um, uh, my heart is yeah. that, you know, um, uh, you know, when you're resting, you know, your faith is working. And so, um, and, you know, I'll borrow some stuff from, you know, Papa Copeland and Brother Bill, but he, they talk about being, uh, not being employed by the industry. Uh, there's a difference when you're being deployed. Uh, so, you know, one of the things is, is that, you know, um, you know, like even in this, so the Lord never, you know, I didn't call me to Hollywood. There it is right there. Um, he called me. Yeah. Um, he didn't call me to, uh, you know, I didn't call me to have a family. He called me. Well, how can you locate your call? Well, it's located in your desire. Mm. Um, and that's how 
God shows himself. Uh, he puts himself in your desire. So you, you have a desire to perform. You have a desire, but, but um, that desire is being fulfilled by his desire, by him. So, you know, you know uh, and you used a great word, quarantine. Um, I heard another man of God says that Noah was quarantined. Mm -hmm. um, and the great thing about that is God provided for him during that time. Yes. Um, whether you knew about it or know about God, if you're locked inside with God, you're yes. locked inside with everything. Yes. And, you know, my husband Rose said, if you, mo you met God on the, quarter, on the corner of nowhere, on the intersection of nothing, but you will be standing there with everything. You know yes. what I mean? And yes. so... Um, what I would say to, you know, uh, someone in the industry is that don't let work define you. Let you define the work. Um, and just because you're not physically on the set, just because um, money is not coming in the way that you uh, know it, don't, don't, don't limit mm -hmm. the God, the, the, the gyra. Don't limit him. He's not you know, God of work, he's God the provider. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so right now it's it's a it's a it's a it's a great moment for you to look inside yourself and says, who called me? Yeah. Um who who who's providing for me? Okay. Um I can't provide for me. It's a great chance for you to watch him provide. Yes. You, and you know what you should do in this moment? You should find someone to encourage. Yes, that's you it. You should get on your IG, your Twitter, uh, find someone to speak into. Uh, it could be a, a fan, it could be a friend or a family member. Find someone and watch and see as you begin to plant that seed in them, watch and see how it begins to reap on, on your side. Yeah. So that's what I would, you know, share um, because when I got you know, what's interesting is that, you know, when you look at Isaac's life, Abraham's son, and then you look at Abraham, you see that there was a famine during both of their lives. Mm -hmm. And I was literally looking at this last night. I'm like, man, it's so interesting that they, it was a famine during both of their times. But, but whatever, whatever Isaac, what Isaac did or what Abraham did, Isaac, meaning that Abraham taught his son something. Yeah. And so what I was saying is that, you know, challenges will come, but the Bible says in that same year, he reaped a hundredfold, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And so just stay tuned. And I want to introduce you, as Paul said to God, my provider, yeah. I want to, I want to introduce you to the person who is known as, uh, he's known as a person that has freed you from debt. Oh. He's known as a healer, a provider. So Right now in this season, find someone to encourage, to bless, get your mind off of you, and yeah. get your mind on others. Yeah, that's good. You know, two things. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, Sophia. Run, run to him. Run yeah. to God. If you haven't, if you haven't just said, Christ, come into my heart. Yeah. I don't yeah. even know what that means, but I heard it, and yeah. I want you to be Lord of my life. I want a new spirit. Yeah. Yeah. To me, I don't know about you, but when I get some new kicks, I'm like, sweet. Yeah. But imagine getting a fresh, brand new inner man. Yeah. Like, whoo! You can't, you can't pay for that. You, there's no price on that. Yeah. And all it is is your heart. And what ends up happening is the thing that you are running from out of fear that if I go to say yes to God, if I do get born again, then I, He's going to take away my acting. He's going to yeah. take away that. <laughs> as a matter of fact, He's going to take you to it. Yes, route in his way, and he will only amplify it yeah. in the ways that yeah. you have been lacking and have yeah. been struggling. And there has been turmoil with you, and you have been stressing in your mind, like, "What am I doing wrong?" And this is that thing, and this is that moment to run to him and not from him. Yeah. You know, those of you that are watching, I know you sense right now God's presence. Just watching this show, I want to ask you a question today. Does Jesus live in your heart? If not, you can make a quality decision today to ask the Son of God, the Savior, 
the one who owns the platform. You can ask him to come into your life. I want to lead you in a prayer today like Derek was saying, you know, you can have the provider in you, the healer in you. If you would want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, I want to lead you in a prayer. I want you to say this with me today. Say, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. I hear your voice today. I hear your voice today. And I'm asking you to come into my life. Lord, you're asking me to come into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. Take my life. And do something great with it. Do something great with Listen, it. if you prayed that prayer, I believe right now Jesus Himself took your life and He forgave you of your sins in this season. And I believe He's giving you your platform. Your number one platform is heaven. Your number one platform is to represent Him. So if, if you did make that decision today, do me a favor, go to Rallies for Christ. Dot org. We want to send you a book free of charge. It's a book called Love Loves You. We want to send it to you. I believe this book will help you see God's love in a brand new way. You know, Derek and Sophia, I, I want to just finish with two thoughts. We're going to have to have you guys come back because, Derek, you opened a new topic, and I heard it, locating your call. Mm. Wow. When you mm -hmm. said that, I mean, I seen a brand new TV show because <laughs> wow. we need to locate it. Mm -hmm. and there's some teaching behind that. Yeah. And, and, and number two, you need to give away your mm -hmm. gifts. You need to, like you said, find somebody. Mm -hmm. You need to call up a strong you said that. You need to give yourself away. Mm -hmm. Take the time to give yourself away. Yeah. Amen, Eddie. Yeah. Anything you want to share before we close? Oh, I just I thank you for this time. You yes. Such rich information. We're so thankful. I know our viewers will be yeah. so thankful. You, yeah. you gave so much information. It's like, to me, that the answers were given. Yeah. Mm. I believe everybody needs to hear what yeah. you had to say. I appreciate it. It's, it's, it's so, so rich. That's all mm. I can say. And yeah. God, God, you're living examples. If yeah. I can just say that. Mm -hmm. The proof is in the pudding. You guys are. Perfect examples of what you said. We see it in action. We mm -hmm. see, we've seen it, and we see it. And thank you for being such an example to the world and mm -hmm. for us as well, but just the world in general. You're two thumbs up. Thank you so much. And you guys look so good on camera right there. You guys look yeah. amazing. Y'all look, like, look like Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Any closing remarks from you guys before we uh, tell the view viewers bye? Well, I just want to say thank you guys, Rick and Nettie. You guys are just, you are family. When I text my bro, I'm like, bro, it's me, Sophia. Like everything <laughs> you guys do, um, just seeing you guys, your walk for mm -hmm. the years that we've seen and known you guys, like just seeing you from there to here, like mm -hmm. the progression that you haven't let go, that you keep pressing, yeah. like that lifestyle mm -hmm. is a letter for us to read Thanks. and to be, to feed on. And we're encouraged whenever I may be getting attacked by discouragement or something, I think, oh, oh, either text my bro and sis, or what would they do in this situation? <laughs> oh, they would hold fast to their confession of faith. Got it. Okay. So hey. thank you guys for being here. Thank you for inviting us to be, you know, a part of your show. We are so honored and, and just mm -hmm. pray that everybody, I believe everybody was just blessed. I know I was blessed. Yes. Oh, man. Me too. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I, I totally agree about, uh, it's, it sounded off, um, you know, about how your call and your gift is your platform. Yes. And I think, you know, uh, it's almost like, um, the visuals that I, uh, saw like a glimpse is, you know, I think, you know, brother Copeland gave a, uh, he spoke this word about, um, how, I don't know how specifically by his ministry, but he had a vision or a dream and he had saw, um, people coming down the road and they had grains mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, they wanted a place to plant it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and what that visual means to me right now is that some of you are walking around 
um, with, with grains and you need a place to plant it. One place you get planted is in your home church. Mm -hmm. um, and then from your home church, the scripture talks about you'll be like a tree, you know, or, it, or you'll bear fruit. So what happens is when, when seed touches the ground, mm -hmm. it fertilizes. Well, that's what happened. That, that's what God wants to do in this season. He wants, yeah. to, mm -hmm. he wants to, for you to locate your purpose. Yeah. And so when you locate that purpose, that's when you begin to get your marching orders. Yes, sir. First, you need to locate it. Then there's training. There's confirming. And yes. then when you're sent on that mission, you're equipped. And you always come back with victory. So about unpacking that, that, that uh, about purpose is essential. And again, I, I thank you guys for pulling us out of just our daily routine you know, mm -hmm. over the last couple of weeks, dealing with Emmanuel and... Mm -hmm. And what this did for me, you guys, for stepping out is saying that uh, there is a life outside of being, you know, quarantined. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. There's there's ways to share. There's yeah. a way to get it done. Yeah. And that's what this did for me today is to show that there's ways to get it done, that you don't have to be confined to it, that you can breathe some some air. and. Yeah. and and I appreciate that. Well, today, today before we close, we used our platform, us four, not for ourselves, but for him to touch other people's lives. Mm -hmm. Hey, folks, we love you guys. Make sure you go to rallysforchrist.org. Sign up. We want to bless you guys. We'll see you guys next time on Rally Talk. God bless you. Thanks, Luke. Bye-bye. <laughs>